Hello, this is a tutorial for Library Thing with Sarah and Sam and Taylor. So what is Library Thing? Yes, let's start there. Library Thing is a web-based application that allows you to catalog your books online. It searches all five international Amazon sites, the Library of Congress, and about 700 other systems. You can even organize your books with the Library of Congress or Dewey Decimal Classification Systems to help you organize and classify. So what does the average person need to get started with library thing? Not much. You need an internet connection and books to catalog. Once you set up a user profile, you can catalog up to 200 books for free. After 200 books, a paid personal account costs $10 a year or $25 for a lifetime. I know it's called library thing, but what does it have to do with libraries? Well, smaller libraries can catalog their entire collections using library thing. And there's another application called Library Thing for Libraries, which isn't free, but allows a library to make its OPAC mobile and do other cool Web 2.0 stuff. We'll talk more about that later. It's also a good application to know because you can introduce it to your patrons who like to read a lot and have their own collections at home. So let's get started. Something fun to know when you're signing up for the account is that you can join using your Facebook or Twitter account. So if you're already on either of those for your library, it's easy to connect with them quickly. If you don't want to use Facebook or Twitter, it's easy to get started with either your personal or your organization's email address. We've set up a fake functioning account to use for this tutorial, so we'll be using that today. So uh, once you've logged in using your username and password from the homepage, click on Profile on the top right on the banner next to the home. Most of the items on this page will fill up by themselves when you start using the site, such as your library tags, etc. But the one thing you do want to do is help patrons find you by editing the profile to include a little more about who you are. To do this, on the profile page, go to the right side of the page <clears throat> and click on Edit Profile and Account. This takes you to a profile and settings page. Here you can add information about yourself and your library, as well as other things like your home page and location. It's important to add your location and home page because, as we'll see later, there are some discovery tools that use this information, but more about them later. After you complete your profile details, most people start cataloging the books in their collections next. There are a few different ways you can do this. If you have a Goodreads account already set up, you can import your collections from there with little hassle. This saves a, a lot of time. You can also upload a text, CV, CSV, XML, HTML, RTF, or tab delimited file. So if you have a file on your computer with your collection already written in it, you're ready to go. Finally, you can add a wish list or your past orders from a website such as Amazon or Barnes & Noble if you don't have anything more complex already. If you don't have anything to import and this is your first time cataloging books, Library Thing makes this very easy, particularly for individual users. First though, let's say you have a small collection that you want to import. First, click on Add Books at the top of the screen. This actually brings you to the page to add individual books right in here. But we'll talk about that later. For now, look down towards the bottom of the screen for a link that says Import Books under Other Options in Bold. This brings you to a page that will let you either upload a file from your computer or from a website, like Goodreads. We have a text file with a few example books, so we're going to upload that now. If you've ever uploaded anything onto the, a website such as Moodle, you know how this goes. Click on the Browse button, find the file you want, select it, and click Upload. Once you click Upload, it brings you to a page that gives you basic information about the books in the file, including how many you picked up and how many have already been added to your library before. This page also allows you to se select which databases to search and add tags en masse to all the books being added, but we'll go over tagging on a book-by-book -book basis later. Once you select all your options, click Import Books. This adds all the ISBN numbers in your file to your queue for searching. The books will be added to your library as the searches occur. Your queue can be seen at the bottom of the Import 
books page, so you can monitor its progress, including how many ISPN searches have failed. Next, we're going to talk about how to book, add books individually. To do this, click on the link at the top that says Add Books. From here, you can search by title, author, keyword, or ISBN, which is my personal favorite. You can also choose what tags to add to the book, which collection to add it to, and what sources to use in the search. Library Things searches over 700 sources, including many international sources, so chances are really good the website will be able to find the books in your collection. If you don't have anything to upload, you can catalog books individually by, again, going to Add Books on the main toolbar. In the search box, you can search by title, author, ISBN, or Library of Congress card number, and things like that. Let's say you want to catalog our textbook by Burke. We have the ISBN number, so we'll type it into the search bar. From there, Library Thing finds the book and displays the results in a large box on the right side of the page. It helps if you don't make any typos, so be careful about putting in the numbers correctly. And there it is. To add the book to your collection, simply click on the book's cover or title. After it's added, it will show up at the top of the page under Recently Added. Just like that. From the Recently Added box, it's easy to make your collection more personal and to refine how each book is classified. Click on Show Quick Edit, like this, and it brings up a box that lets you add tags, rate the book using a five-star system, add a review, and choose a collection where your book will go. One nice thing about choosing a specific collection for a book is that your library patrons who use Library Thing can add books to a collection called Read But Not Owned and even To Read for when they're next at the library. To do this, under Quick Edit, click on the little brown folder called Edit Collections. The options are displayed right below that. In this case, we'll add the textbook to our favorites. Another option is to click on Edit Book option. This allows you to add everything the show Quick Edit does. You can also edit using your books. Here we've clicked on Edit Book. As you can see, there are a lot of different ways to edit the book, including the physical information. Think of it like a mark record. You can even change the Dewey number on your copy if you want. On this page, there's also an interesting option for libraries under Quick Links on the right. Clicking on Swap, right down here, if there were any numbers available, <laughs> takes you to several book swapping sites such as Paperback Swap. This could be useful if you're reading your collection, depending on how much work you want to do. Returning to the Edit Book page, or from the show Quick Edit, you can add tags to your book. This really facilitates discovery and helps organize your collection. Now let's add the tags Technology and LIS to this book. Here we'll click on Show Quick Edit from the Recently Added box, and then we put the tags into the text box and click Save. When you click on the title page again, you can see information like the details of the book from the publisher and other people's tags, which are displayed in the Word cloud. Using the Folksomony in the Word cloud, you can discover new ways to classify and tag your book. You can also click on a tag. Here we'll click on the, on the word technology. Doing this takes you to a page about the tag where you see variations of it and see books to which the tag is most often applied by other users. Clicking on a book's cover from this page takes you to the, the book's library theme page, which is kind of like an authority file. On a tags page, you can also see related subjects. Clicking on a related subject takes you to that subject's page. This also assists with browsing because here you can see and explore sub-subjects and books under the same subject. As you can see, Library Thing gives you many different options to explore new books and subjects that interest you and are related to what is already in your collection. Discovery tools like this are really good ways to engage patrons, especially since Library Thing for Libraries will show patrons the tags on books in your OPAC making it a great way for them to browse for recommendations without having to leave your site. Speaking of library thing for libraries, what, is this, what it essentially does it, is it makes your OPAC into a web, web 2.0 page. 
Importing ratings and reviews, tags, similar books, series, awards, shelf browse, stack maps, other editions, and Lexile measures. You can pick which of these you want to add to your OPAC, which undoubtedly affects the cost. All of these options help increase the patron's level of engagement with the OPAC. Library Thing for Libraries also includes some other great features, such as Book Psychic, an automated reader's advisory program, a website adaptation for mobile browsing on smartphones or tablets, a Library Thing widget to install on your site and show off new acquisitions, the ability to post your library's events on Library Thing automatically, and a few other really nifty features. To find out more about Library Thing for Libraries, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage and click on About. Then on Libraries, and finally on Library Thing for Libraries. Doing this takes you to the Library Thing for Libraries homepage. Here you can sign up for a demo, read a printable handout, and determine if the software is a good fit for your library. One of the greatest strengths of Library Thing for Libraries is the discovery tools it provides your patrons by syncing with your OPAC. Many of these tools are also available at the standard Library Thing site. Now we're going to take a look at some more discovery tools and what the site has to offer. From the home page, look at the left side of the page under the Discover menu. One fun thing to do is to click on Community. Doing this takes you to a page where you can find groups and talk with other people about popular books. Both groups and talk function down here. Both groups and talk function as forums for users to discuss book or interest-related topics, with the difference being that groups is confined to group members who presumably have a vested interest in the group's theme. For example, you could start a library thing group for book club at your library, which frankly is the best idea ever. Ever. <laughs> Another fun and useful part of the website is the local page. To get there, click on local on the main toolbar at the top of the home page. Now we're going to type in our location, Boston, Massachusetts. After we do this, um, the page displays local library events and their venues. Using this page lets you find out what's happening at other local libraries and gives your library another social media outlet through which to publicize its events. If you have Library Thing for Libraries, your events automatically become part of the local calendar here. And you can also add an event by, or a venue by clicking on Add Event or Add Venue at the top right of the page. So this is especially useful for networking with other local libraries, museums, literary festivals, and bookstores if you're interested in either scheduling events to host together or making sure you're not stepping on each other's toes. Another cool place to visit is the Zeitgeist page. Click on its name from the main toolbar and you arrive at a page that has a lot of the little tr extra trivia that librarians love. From the Zeitgeist submenu as well, you can click on, for example, books. And you can see the top books in many categories, like most reviewed, most copies, highest rated, and more. This is a great tool for acquisitions and choosing new books to circulate or purchase extra copies of. The popular and reviews pages um, at the top of the Zeitgeist submenu also show you what is trending and have trend and tools that can be used similarly. Altogether, Library Thing has a myriad of tools for both patrons and libraries to use to connect with each other. Many of these can be imported into the library's OPAC, while others are useful either on mobile apps or the Library Thing website. No matter which venue you use, Library Thing is great at getting more attention to your library's collections and events and helps patrons feel engaged with your online presence. We hope you've learned a lot about the basics on how to use Library Thing to your benefit. For more information, please consult the sources listed in the video's description.